Hello everyone, welcome to Chez Lanois. We're going to do something very different today. And we're going to try to honor social distancing as much as possible. But today is a very special day, so just have to take our chances. Uh, hopefully I won't die and he won't give me COVID and I won't give him COVID. So this is Charlie Sanz. He's from Madrid. He is an amazing painter. And I hear, we're going to find out, an amazing chef. He worked in restaurants in Sevilla. In Sevilla and in Santander, in the north of Spain and in the Basque country. And today, he's going to make a paella, which is one of my favorite dishes. But just a little background of why we're here and why we're taking such a chance in this time when we're supposed to be socially isolated. This is Maria Emilia, my daughter-in-law. It's the first time I've called her that, my beautiful wife's beautiful daughter. This is her boyfriend. Talk about, I'm writing a novel right now and it's called Love in the Times of COVID, but this is a true love story. When they met six months ago, this is their six month anniversary she was visiting and bam COVID hit she couldn't travel back to spain she couldn't go anywhere they've been stuck together in this tiny little apartment and it's beautiful there's love it's it's just so, so amazing to watch and i'm so happy so today's the six month anniversary so we decided to celebrate here at chez la noir and charlie is going to make Paella. So, for once, I am going to shut up. I'm going to stand behind the camera, and Charlie's going to tell us how he's going to he's going to show us how to whip up some magic. Okay, guys. If anyone don't know what is a paella, a paella it's a really typical dish from Spain. And what is the paella is basically anything you have in the kitchen with rice. It's a dish that poor people used to eat in Spain back in the days of hunger. So what we have here is chicken. That's the meat we're going to add to the rice. Some veggies. How you call that, Richard? String beans. String beans. Onion. And artichokes. That's it. Well, and then at the end, we're going to add some shrimp camarones that we have here. But that's just for decoration, but at the end, to do the paella good. So, should we start? We're rolling. Okay, let's go. So, first thing, we put the paella pan and the fire, uh, we want this to be like really, really hot. Because the first thing we're gonna do at the beginning is the chicken. So we want the chicken nice and crispy. So we put olive oil. to cover the whole pan like that. So here I have a trick. I put a piece of garlic here and when this start to burn it's when I'm gonna add the chicken. So Oh, and then also, we didn't say that's a really important thing, the saffron, but as we don't have saffron... I do have saffron. Yeah, we have. Yes. Well, but, but if you don't have saffron, you can use that, which is Goya saffron, sazon, which is, it works, it works for me. Okay. But if you have saffron, yeah, let's, 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 let's get the saffron. 
Do you, do, you, do you want it now? Yeah, it's all the way here. Hold on. I will get it for you. Let me put this down. No, no, sorry. Let's put this down. And while I'm looking for the saffron, do you want to talk about your background in painting? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you want to mention who you want to work for, used to work for, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. Nowadays, I'm a painter, but before that, I was a chef. Um, what, what, what should I talk about, about painting? Like what I'm working right now? Sure. Or, well, um, I've been a painter for the past six years, I would say. Um, nowadays, this thing of the COVID hit me in, in the apartment with Emilia. Um, I decided because I was going to stay for longer to do a big painting about what's going on. So I'm doing a huge painting of 160 inches plus 84 inches. So I've been working on that painting for a month already and I think I have another month to go. So it's keeping me entertained. Okay, Safran. Oh, that's good. Just one Safran. Okay. Now. Yeah. Is this thing getting like really hot when it's heating? No. No. That's the one you used to, to, to use, right? Yes. Oh, no, I used the metal one. The metal one? Yeah. But you can scratch the, the thing or... Okay, so use that one. Yes. Yeah. Much better. But if you need something to protect, just in case. Okay. Okay. What is? Well, let me just say, I wish we had... Maybe next time... I can, or maybe I can tag your website at the uh -huh. end of this so people can look at your work well, if you if you like to share. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Because what I found amazing, again, it's a small apartment, but the paintings are huge. They fill up the whole wall, and it's they're they're beautiful. Um, I really love the work that that Charlie does. I love, as you know, the creative process, and I'm fascinated by people who. Okay. Engaged in this process. So this looks like it's ready to go. Yes. So this is the chicken raw. It is. Um, I didn't put any salt, any pepper. We're gonna put that at the end. I just want this to be like crispy and nice and tender. In Spain, we used to we used to put chicken or conejo, rabbit. I know that here people aren't used to eat rabbit, but in Spain we do. Uh, it's delicious. Mm, I it's, love rabbit. You try rabbit? Not in paella, but I love rabbit. Veggies and rice. Um, it always goes 
first, the meat. No matter how you do the paella, the meat has to go always first. How about when you're making seafood paella? Well, that's a different story. When you're making seafood paella, you don't want the seafood to be, uh, how do you say, good of Hard, overcooked. You don't want that. So you start with the veggies, and then you put the rice on the water, and then you let the seafood cook with the water and the rice. Say one more time. You put the veggies. Once you cook the veggies, you put the rice with the water and with the seafood. Only with seafood. If you are doing a squid paella with seafood, you cook first the squid, then you do the veggies, and then you add the seafood and the rice. Mm. Pay attention. These are the words of a master. Imported directly from Madrid, Spain. You know, I was thinking that maybe I, we, we kind of did this spontaneously, but I think once this COVID thing is over, I think I'm going to have a guest chef series. That would be great. You're, and you're you're the fir and you will be immortalized because you are the first, the first master chef at Chez La Noire. Mm. At the beginning, it has to be like really hot the the pan. Really hard. That's a really traditional dish. Like in Spain, we used to cook with the family on Sunday. That's the only thing that my father know how to cook paella. And you have it on Sunday with wine. And then you do a sobremesa, you play domino, you play a mousse, cards. You have a few drinks and then, boom, fiesta. Okay, now. You can add a little bit of garlic. You don't chop the garlic, you just put the no, whole... No, just put the whole thing. It's just to give flavor. But wouldn't it give more flavor if you chop it up, or not necessary? No, it's just to give flavor to the meat and then the uh, sofrito. But if I put the garlic chopped right now, it's gonna get boring. So we don't want this boring taste from the paella. Just look at that loveliness. The aroma is filling the kitchen. Mm. What I love about what Charlie is doing is the simplicity. I tend to do things in much in a complex way that most of the time is totally unnecessary but that's just the way I roll. I would have had like chopped onions, chopped garlic and just the simplicity is so beautiful. No, forget it. You do all of these you do with the eye. You don't have to think too much. You just meat, veggies and rice. And let's see, I, I never uh, count how many pieces of chicken I'm going to add, or how many onions, or it's just, you see the pan, and then you figure out, it's looking. Mm. 
because sometimes you open the fridge and then you have a little bit of chicken and then next to the chicken there is a little bit of pork and then you just mix it and you just use what you have at home. Tell me when you have a minute that's free, that meaning that something's not happening because I, I want to uh, introduce them to Emilia. Mm. Like, like, like what? Meaning I'm going to walk away, so let me know when you have a minute where I can walk away and not miss anything. Oh, yeah, you can walk away. We just like do the chicken. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. So while he's doing that, I prepared the table. You notice there's no forks and knives here. What we have is the decanter with a wonderful bottle of Saint-Emilion, which is a wonderful French wine. And we're gonna follow that with a 1995 Porto, which I bought in 1996. It's been sitting in my closet and I decided to open it as a special occasion. And we're also gonna have some champagne, but that's a surprise, don't say anything. And this morning, my lovely wife, Alexandra, probably this is my lovely wife, Alexandra, and this is her lovely daughter, Emilia. And together, six months. How amazing is that? How does it feel to be locked up in a tiny apartment <laughs> with a man that you just met for six months? It's like, it's do or die, right? It's, you're either yeah. in or... Yeah, well, but if it's, I don't know, there's a, uh, so much love, so... We are surviving, <laughs> we're good. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Yeah. And Alexander is very happy because normally, Maria Emilia lives in Barcelona. Oh yeah. And he just came to visit uh, Charlie. So <laughs> she's thrilled that daughter number two is yeah. here. Daughter number one, the older one, is Maria Jose. And she's living in Madrid. And she is living with her boyfriend same, similar situation. They got together right as COVID hit and yes. they're stuck together. That's the way you find out <laughs> if you really love. This is where love happens mm -hmm. because you have no choices. Yeah. But I was saying this morning, Alexandra, I was up early. I get up really early in the morning to write and she invited me for a walk in Central Park and it was so beautiful. I really encourage all of you to do this. And mm -hmm. we had some of these sunflowers and I, they were kind of dying, but so I created a smaller bouquet, which is really, really beautiful. <laughs> hey, this is my daughter Paloma, who's walking away. She's like, no, Dad. And then we were inspired by all the beautiful flowers we saw in Central Park, so we bought some flowers. I particularly love these. I picked these out. But it was, I really encourage you to go for a walk. Yes, wear your masks, but people are far away from each other, so it's not as though you're gonna catch anything. But it's just so spectacular, especially early in the morning. Central Park is paradise. You know, we're so used to walking on the main roads, but there are all these little paths that lead to nowhere. And there are these little ponds and the reflections were so beautiful. Maybe one day I'll take the camera and just talk as I'm walking, just to give you guys a tour of everything that Central Park has to offer. And this is my, <laughs> she said no, I, I, I respect, it. I have to respect that. Started to get crispy. We want a little bit more crispy because you see there is, you can see the blood here. But until we stop to see blood, we have to keep going. Yeah. Black pepper is here. Oh, great. That's what I need. Salt. 
here, right? You want he you want heavy salt or you want fine salt? This is like the rock salt. Oh, that's rock? Yeah. No. So if you want just fine salt, you can use that. Or you can use, this is fine salt. That's great. I think my next guest, when this COVID madness is over, is going to be Misha. Misha is one of my heroes. He's, uh, I mentioned him before, he's an amazing jazz pianist. I'm going to put a link at the bottom of this, and he's, as you know, as you know musicians, they aren't performing. There's no way to perform right now. So he's doing all these concerts from his home, alive on a frequent basis. And he's also, as I mentioned, a master chef. And he's cooking. You know, I, I mean, I'm doing my little thing here, but I mean, this is a joke, what I do. Come now, here. Now we have to slow down the fire a little bit. You mean low, lower the fire lower. so it's not so hot? No. Like when did you decide to, like what makes you decide to do that? When, when it's, because we're gonna add the, the veggies. We add this first. What I love about these dishes like paella, jambalaya, risotto, pasta, is that you can I love the idea that you just add whatever you have to it and you come up with these wonderful meals. I mean, there's a basic, but after that you just improvise. Like one of the, my favorite paella dishes that was taught to me in my early 20s um, by one of my dear friends at the time, Ashley, a chef. He added fresh ginger to his paella, which is not very common, but it was such a beautiful touch of extravagance. Ginger? Yeah. First time I hear that. Yeah. So it's, it's, as I said, it's, it was rare, but his, it was an interesting take on it, and it added a whole other dimension to paella. With chicken, right? Y yes. Ginger goes great with chicken. The other chef that I'd love to have over is Liz Rosa. Liz Rosa. And please look her up on YouTube. She has a channel. Liz, L I Z, Rosa, R O S A. Again, I'll put the link on. She, in my opinion, is. One of the greatest all-time singers on the face of this planet who happens to sing Brazilian jazz, Brazilian music. But she has this ability to draw you in and to create emotions. And that's very rare these days. Uh, I think I mentioned her before and the person she reminds me of is um, Liz, I'm sorry, she reminds me of uh, Judy Garland, a uh, mother of Liza Minnelli, in that she, when she sings, she tells stories. And uh, so, look her up. She used to play with Misha until this COVID madness hit us, and she escaped to Brazil. So, we have to find some way to get her back here to continue sharing her music her incredible talents, and her artistry in the kitchen. She showed me, she gave me her take on um, feijoada, which is an amazing Brazilian dish. Again, and that's in the same vein of paella, that it's rice-based and you're adding a bunch of different meats and it's 
what would be considered poor people's food because you just throw in whatever you have and it's just pure delight. I think I may have also mentioned that Liz... Wait, 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 wait. What are we adding now? Now we're going to add the onion. Whoa. God, this is... I'm learning a lot here. When I make my paella, I, I put the onions in, in the beginning. But this is... This is new. It's good. Oh, you first put the onion and then the meat? Yeah, I make it, like I, I can make the sofrito, you know, and then I add the meat because then that, my idea, again, I will begin by saying I don't know anything. I just kind of make it up as I go along. So I'm, I'm really appreciating your mastery of doing it the authentic way. Well, you can do it, you can do it both ways, but if you want the, the meat to be crispy, you should do the meat first. It's like when you're doing like a, a carbonara that you first do the pork, the guanciale, and then if you want to eat, to add onions, you add it later. I am going to do that. This is the real deal, folks. We have authentic paella. The skin. Mm. Mm. But it gets sticky in the pan, so I get it out. That's delicious. No salt, no pepper, nada. No. El tomate. And this is the true sign of a master chef. He has his glass of wine right next to him at all times. So you notice when I cook, I am not a master chef. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm making believe by having my wine next to me. What are we doing now? Now we're going to do some tomato juice for the end, before we put the water and the rice. So this is for making the sofrito. You can add tomato sauce, but it's much better if, if you do it with a natural tomato and you do it yourself. It's gonna be more tasty with tomato sauce, but this is better. Healthier. You're saying it's, it's tastier with tomato? Yeah, because it has a lot of chemicals and it tastes more like tomato sauce, but this is much better. We want to do this natural. I wish you guys could smell this. Mm. I feel like Beatrice giving you a tour of the seven levels of hell. You remember Dante's Inferno? And you, my friends, are at the last level of hell where you only get to look at the possibility of heaven. You get to see, imagine that aroma. And yet, it's so far, it's so close, but yet so far. Hmm. I wonder if Beatrice was actually a sadist and just was torturing okay. our friend Dante Alighieri. We'll never know. So here's one of my favorite stories about Dante Alighieri, his seven levels of hell, right? 
So, and, and you can say this about any of your friends, right? Take, you know, you want to make fun of your friend and you, and you say, Beatrice was taking you to the seven levels and you were at the very bottom. This is the place that's reserved for the worst people on earth. And you get there and your friend, right? Your friend is making love to the most beautiful woman in this view. Making love to the most, most beautiful woman in the world. And you ask Beatrice, wait a minute, I thought this was hell. How come he gets to make love to this beautiful woman for all eternity? Beatrice turns around, bitch slaps you, then pip slaps you and says, how dare you make light of this poor woman's suffering. That's my favorite story of hell. Some people ask if on the subject of hell, if we are descending to levels of hell that we never imagined. Some would say that we were already in hell, but that was just a prelude. That was just the foreplay. And some would say that we're getting a little break right now from this COVID just to be able to take a breath because it's a way of saying get ready because this is going to get so much worse. That's what my novel is about. I'll let you know when it's ready. Okay. Now we have to wait until the onion is cooked. It has to be like that, like transparent. You can see it, but not so cooked because you want the onions to be a little bit al dente, not overcooked. Do you guys understand why Emilia has fallen in love with this man? Do you think it was because of his devilish good looks? His Spanish ponytail Let's see what we call and his it. hairy chest. No, 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 no. She's a very practical woman. This man can cook and every day he's whipping up these amazing meals. What are you doing for your partner during this COVID madness? Remember I spoke about spiritual partnerships and You remember, I was telling you that the secret, not just during COVID, but the secret of relationships is to be a hoe. And some people misunderstood me and they, they took issue with that. I am elevating, remember I said it was the art of prostitution. At, at its highest level, let's take out the pay part, let's take out the abuse part, and I'm just using the idea that you are dedicating yourself to giving your partner so much pleasure. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to that in a second as he peels the shrimp. You can put it with the skin, but I like it to be peeled. In Spain, we call it paella fiera, which is blind paella. Pa paella what? Fiera, which is blind paella. That means that even a blind person can eat it. So mm. You don't need to get the skin out or no bones. Nothing, just ready to eat. 
So this rim is ready. What I did not record, my friends, when Charlie and Emilia came today, my lovely wife made an Ecuadorian ceviche with patacones, which are platanos, fried plantains. Oh my God. We have been in heaven this day. So I was saying, talking about the art of prostitution, the idea is you're dedicating yourself to your partner's pleasure in every way possible. You, you're trying to make your partner feel as though you're the most important person in the world. Now, some people take objections to that, but why? Because tomorrow, remember, sometimes sex is for you, sometimes sex is for me, and then sometimes it's for us. So what goes around comes around. Remember, a flash, two flashlights pointing at each other. Which one is giving, which one is taking. There's only light. So it's not about, you know, what have you done for me lately. It's just everything's being done and today it just happens to be for your partner. And what you want to do is just give yourself to them in every way possible psychologically, emotionally, sexually, you're trying to create an unforgettable experience for them. The master seems to be contemplating something. Something important is happening here. Yeah. It's too much oil there. So we have our purpose done, which is like... This is too much oil. Yeah. We already fried the chicken and the veggies, so now we're going to take a little bit of water out because that's not healthy though, um, not to try like a spoon. A uh, spoon, you want, there's a metal spoon right in there, a big one, or you want a little one? Like that. Like a smaller spoon if you need. No, we're going to get like almost all the oil. You have not done, explored what I'm describing about being a whole. Do it tonight. You don't have to tell your partner what you're going to do. Just go over the top and just serve, be of service, and just do whatever it is that you think will make your partner so happy, and then more. Instead of thinking about having sex with your partner, think about creating an experience. Sex is secondary. So, and the same, then, we, again, we're talking about sex, but we're really not talking about sex. We're talking about agape, love. We're talking about sharing. And that can be, this is, this is sharing, you know, you, it doesn't have to be the work of a master, but you made the effort, if you make the effort to create this paella for your partner, that's serving. You are being a bodhisattva and dedicating yourself to the pleasure of your partner. Now this is ready for the tomato. Now we add the tomato. I don't know about you guys, but I am salivating here. And what's so beautiful is the simplicity. Is this the complicated? No. It's 
Notice the artistry, how he's placing one by one in, in, in place. I would have just dumped the whole damn thing in there. They already choked. Mas que muchísimo. That, my friends, is one of my favorite all-time Spanish phrases. That, ironically, I picked up in Spain in 1985. I was living for a month in La Calle Echegaray during a medical rotation. This is my last year of medical school. And very interesting, I met an artist whose name was Charlie who was an amazing artist, who was much older, and this guy was full of wisdom. And he taught me, he was also a DJ at a club on the calle, right across the street from Viva Madrid. I don't remember the name of the club, but he was so animated, and, and he would always say, mas que muchísimo, which means, like, muchísimo is a superlative, right? Which is, like, you can't get, Mucho is a lot. Muchísimo is like more than a lot. It's tell that to your partner. I always say that. I say it to my kids and to my wife. I love you más que muchísimo. I mean, is that even possible? Make it possible. I'm sorry, Charles. Go on. You can interrupt me, by the way, anytime. No, I would. I, I'd be like, we're ready for the ride. I. You just had these pieces, and I got salt, pepper, and now, if I find it, because I don't know where to put it, I'm gonna add some rosemary. Oh, I think the rosemary is right over there. Oh, no, that's thyme. I never saw the rosemary. So you add? No, it was like rosemary uh, up here. So it doesn't matter if you use fresh rosemary or... Well, it's better fresh rosemary, but this rosemary works. And sometimes it's more tasteful than fresh rosemary. Fresh rosemary always looks better. But this is more tasteful because it's dry. And we are going to cook. This with the rice is going to give the rice so much taste. Okay. Vamos a ir, Richard. That's, 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 that's a really important thing. Say it. Tell me. So the rice. I don't use like um, a strict thing to measure the rice. So what I do, it's simple. How many people are we gonna be for dinner? Four. Four. Five. Five. So you go like that. You you got your hand, rice. So that's one. Two. I am loving this. It's organic. It's real. Great. And again, what kind of rice are you using? Four. We're using um, arborio rice, but, but the rice we use in Spain is arroz bomba, but here it's complicated to find it. So the same rice for the risotto is working good for me. Arborio is what you use for the risotto. Arborio, it's, it's a great rice, by the way. Arborio. So, I add five halves of rice. But what happens if someone wants to 
half a second this. Okay. You might you reach or want to have a second dish? I will definitely want to have a second dish. Emilia? For sure. Alejandra? Without question. Without a question. Me? I will. And Paloma? Without question. She always says no because she's 18 and that's what 18 year olds do. Okay. And now, now we have like half of that which is half a kilo of rice but let's see if we still hungry some more and then that that was beautiful what else what you just did right there is worth the price of admission <laughs> i've never seen that before and it's just so beautiful now, this is really important, that's the sazon. The sazon, it has a little bit of saffron, but it has like a colorant, colorante, it's, it's good, say colorante. The coloring? Colorant. Like a shote. It what makes the, the rice of the paella yellow. So that's the most important thing, to have a nice looking paella. The rice has to look yellow, otherwise it's not a paella. So this thing has this uh, colorante, which makes the paella. But I bet you the color, the colorante in this is, is a shote. And I, sh I bring that from home, uh, probably. Which I actually have here. Oh, but that's natural, right? And you have to and you smash it. So what I do? Can you place one second? Let me sort of find the right place. So this is, just to give you guys an alternative, so what he's doing is also putting in a little bit of saffron. Just a little bit. Oh, that's too much. No, 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 I love saffron. So you break it, and you put it like that. That's Spanish bone, saffron. So as an alternative, if you don't have saffron, which by the way is expensive, you get achote. This is what the Dominicans use in their food. I don't know if it's just Dominicans, but I grew up with Dominicans as a child, and this is what they used to use to make the yellow rice. And you can either boil it in water, or you put it in oil, right, in the seeds, and then you have to take out the seeds, and what you end up having is yellow or deep red oil, and then you cook everything in that, and everything comes out red which is amazing. So now we are like mixing the saffron and the colorante with all the rice. But as I'm moving, I'm seeing that there is more meat than rice. So what do we do? More rice. The smell, my friends, is to die for. Alucinante. This is the other thing that my, yeah. that uh, Charlie in Madrid that I met at a very young and impressionable age taught me because everything was mas que muchísimo and alucinante, which is a beautiful way to look at the world, even in these crazy times. I would say it's like tripping. If you are tripping, no. Yeah. Yeah, but it's he. Like a feeling. Yes, and it's but he used it in the sense of you know you're hallucinating, but it's just it's so amazing that you're hallucinating. It's so beautiful that you are hallucinating, and I and I love that the use of that word. It's again the superlative multiplied by one hundred. Look at that. Isn't that pure loveliness? So what Charlie is doing now is boiling some water. You know, I have this little gizmo there that you boil water in. Oh, okay. Cool. And 
it's the most amazing thing. It's just a simple thing, but rather than trying, like when I, we make coffee in the morning or tea or whatever, it's just you just pop that thing open and it boils water so rapidly. Now we want all these mixed together and the rice has to get the flavor of everything here. In 20 minutes, my friend, I opened this bottle of wine, the Santé Million, with the idea of letting it breathe. But as you can see, the lovely women have almost finished it. So I think I need to open another bottle to allow it to breathe. Thank you. I'm gonna, while the next break, I think I'm gonna read a poem to you guys. Continuing on this theme of sexual exploration, now that we have so much time with our partners, and we're talking about how to pleasure. Um, again, I wrote a series of poems that are in my collection of reflections on the nature of love and sex. During our next break, I will read it to you. I think what I'll do. And this is going to be dedicated to Charlie and Emilia. But for now, let's focus on the paella, which is the reason that we're here. So we're going to add the water. Now, for so for the water, you don't have to measure too much. You just have to look here. How do you call these things? The handles. The handles. And the water has to be when the handles begin. More or less. More or less. But like, do you want to cover the rice or? You have to cover the rice. And you have to move this a little bit. Because you don't want it to get sticky down there. just to make um, a space between everything and everything has to be mixed, mix it nice. This is so much flavor that you don't need chicken broth or seafood broth or any kind of caldo. So now, fuego máximo. Hot, 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 hot. Is the idea to get it boiling? So, oh, the idea of getting boiling is because it's much quicker. If you add 
the cold water is going to take much longer. So it's good if you have this gadget to hold the water. A traditional paella would be with a chicken broth, you cook the three hours before and all that, but we're doing a quick paella. Now we leave it like that. 20 minutes. Okay. So this is what it looks like now. And we're going to show you what it looks like in 20 minutes. So since we have a few minutes here, can you adjust it so that my... Yeah. I'm going to read to you. It's three poems, really, but it's the same theme. And this is dedicated to Charlie and Emilia. And these are called photographs. My most cherished photographs of you were taken not with a camera, but with my eye. In those most intimate of moments, when my eyes were not looking, but rather seeing, not recording an event, but capturing a feeling, an emotion, an eternity too deep for the conscious mind to apprehend. I save these photographs. They transcend the moment. They bring me back to those moments of bliss, of wholeness, and authenticity. That was photographs one. Photographs two. I flip through old photographs taken unconsciously with my non-seeing eye. I see photographs unconsciously captured with my unconscious non-seeing eye. I cannot know for sure that they are photographs of you. One can only make out a cropped likeness of your lips, of your chin, a tongue licking its lips, that portion of your neck at the base that sucks in as you sigh. My computer just died. Paperman. An embarrassing death. So hold that thought. And I'll come back when I fix this. It's a continuous thing or oh, I just So we're back and I still haven't fixed my computer yet. But I was asking Charlie how come you don't cover the paella the way, because when we make rice, we cover the rice. Because in, I was telling to Richard that in Spain, when we do the, the, the paella, we actually do it, we actually do it in the fire. We don't do it in, in the kitchen. So we do a fire in the street with wood, and we put a big pan this is a thing you do for, for many people, for 20, 30, sometimes 40 people. And you grab like a big paella, and then you, you don't have a cover for a, for a paella like this size. It's impossible. We are talking about um, the size of, of diameter. It's like it's like huge. So you, you don't have like a cover for that. Um, you just move the rice, move the rice from down up and then you mix it and, that, and that's it and sometimes what I was telling to reach her that I saw it one time in a fiesta in, in Valencia they were using uh, the oar or it's called or or for to from, row a boat from, from from a boat like they were like mixing the chicken and the rice with the thing like that and I was like oh my god but there was a paella for 60 people at least like it was like a huge paella um, yeah we don't need that over that sometimes what we do which is like this is like crispy paella we put it on the oven so once we got it like that super hot boom in the oven so then you make sure it's crispy on top but we're gonna do the traditional one 
So this is almost over. We're almost done here. So what we are waiting here is to the water to stop making bubbles like he's making. Do you wait till the water completely evaporates? Almost. Because also we want a little bit crushed down. It's no, what we bit. call the socarrat. Yeah. Say again? Socarrat. Socarrat. So In that's French, it, it, the gata. Okay. Yeah. They have a name that Emilia called, they told me in Ecuador it's called... Oh. Emilia! We tasted this, it's alucinante. And then you were saying you had to, at this point, this is when you flatten it? Yeah, so I flat this a little bit, so I make sure that it's almost, all the water is compensated everywhere in the pan. So we have the same amount of water left in everywhere in the pan. And now you are not supposed to touch the paella. You just wait until this thing evaporates. And then you you said something about covering it with aluminum foil. Once this is used, you you will see when the water it's it's evaporated and there is no more water. So when this is evaporated, we traditionally what they do is like they get some they get something like that and they cover with with that like that. But so, so it doesn't have to be aluminum foil. It can be newspaper or it can be this or it can be aluminum foil is the most the precise thing to do it because you take it out and it's still hot. You use that. Most of the times you will burn that. <laughs> ah. Especially if you are drinking white with the paella. <laughs> Aluminum foil is, is, is the best. It's what they use in restaurants. When we are at home, for example, my father, he always used uh, handkerchief like that. Mm. A tablecloth. Tablecloth. Table yeah, this is called a uh, oh, hand. No, actually, I don't know the name of it. That's a good question. I'm gonna need to find out. Like a rug. Yeah, but it's in the kitchen. It's not. It's, there's a name for it. I just don't, don't, don't remember. In Spain, we call everything we call a rug. Yeah. Todo es un trapo. So we call it trapo. But my my mother, for example, she gets angry with my father. Like, don't put a trapo on top. Like, you always destroy all the trapos because. You, that and then what happens is like it used to work it used to work especially if you are drunk <laughs> that's what happened while well, we're waiting for that to dry I'm going to finish this last poem that I'm dedicating that was horrible that my computer died but this is photographs number three and again it's a dedication to Charlie and Amelia for six months of their love. So, photographs three. Photographs of parts, almost as though cutouts from larger photographs. Lips, red, flush, moist, with a hint of a tongue in search of another, the line of a jaw in focus, followed by that place where your windpipe meets your torso, sucked in with a sigh, barely in focus. A fullness, firm, round, and barely in focus, which can only be a breast. Many photographs of torsos, intertwined, joined at the hips, seen from various angles, clearly from the eyes belonging to one of the torsos. A mound of shaved skin in clear focus, connected with a progressively blurred torso and breast, an arched muscular back, inviting and pouring buttocks. My eyes cannot see you in these fragmented photographs but my mind knows the feeling of you. All those lines boil down to my eyes cannot see you in these fragmented photographs, but my mind knows the feeling of you. That's what love is all about. It's knowing the feeling 
of your apartment. So, back to the paella. We're ready to go. We are ready to go. Which is ready to go. Now, what we're gonna need is the aluminum foil. Here. Great. That's a trick we use in Spain to make the socarrat, which is the boring the, the, the back of the paella. So we put this hot, hot, hot. And you wait like 20 seconds. You make sure you move a little bit. Otherwise, you don't want just one part to be born, born, born. When we do this in Spain, in the fire, we, we use dry flowers from the pines. So dry flowers from what? From the pines, the pine flowers. Uh, piñas. Mm -hmm. You know the pine... Yeah, pine, pine trees? Why, what do you do with them? We put it on the fire, so they make like, like a huge ball of flames. So that's how we hot the paella. We try to it with wood. So I put the, the fire off. And now what we do is cover it. Five minutes. Just for five minutes. And what's the reason for this? Like, what's happening right now? Like now we are ending the process. Like, it's, it's gonna end the cook in here. So, traditionally, you describe this huge pan serving 40 people. What do they cover it with? <laughs> with an entire newspaper. <laughs> You, just, you put it directly on the rice, on the stove. Yeah, newspaper. Newspaper, uh, oh, has a newspaper, how you call... At least the sheets of the... The sheets of the newspaper. Paper, paper, paper. Um, or sometimes, like, they put, like, six or seven like that, one on top of another. And that's it. Or aluminum foil. And, but, I mean, the process. What's the process here? Is it locking in the flavor? Is it... It's locking all the flavor and... What they do when they use romero, which is rosemary, they burn the ro romero, the rosemary, a little bit, and they throw it burning on the top, and then they close it. So the taste of the rosemary gets all over the uh, top of the rice. Mmm, fabulous, fabulous. So we have to wait five minutes before we dig in. Five minutes and we're ready to hit. Okay, we'll be back in five minutes. And five minutes later, we're back with our master chef, Charlie Sanz, straight from Madrid, revealing his master obra. <laughs> I only wish that you guys could be here. The smell. The aroma, the bouquet. It's más que muchísimo. Alucinante. Divino. So, until the next time, my friends. Don't forget. Be a hoe. Master the art of prostitution. The art of being a bodhisattva to your partner. Bringing them pleasure in every possible way. Collect good karma because as you do this for your partners, you will receive back tenfold. Arrivederci.